I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 4th of April, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be talking about why Americans work so much in Dungeons and Dragons. See you after the bump. With you, I can be sad with you. Just take my hand and fly up through the dreams where the skies are so clear. Today is Tuesday, it's a working day. My entire week is super busy. Samana Sana is coming up this weekend and so we're getting busy getting ready for that. There's just a lot going on, so not a lot to, to tell about. Today for dinner, the interesting thing is uh, Chris came from Inago and brought an entire tuna, which we got to cut up and do at the house ourselves. So tuna steaks for dinner, but there was only enough for the adults. So the kids all had salmon, uh, all done by Paul on the grill. We had a really good dinner. And then uh, just shortly after dinner, we headed out to have uh, drinks at El Sisteo uh, on the square with April and some of her friends. And if you watch my shorts, the girl who sang What's Going On uh, was there hanging out. I had no idea she was on the show and had hundreds of views. So I she's like, oh, I heard you're a vlogger. And I'm like, um, yeah, you were on this week. And I showed her the video. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm famous. It was very funny. Uh, so uh, we hung out there, but I had promised the kids I was going to play Dungeons and Dragons with them, or actually Pathfinder. So I say D&D because people know it, but Pathfinder is basically an open source copy of uh, Dungeons and Dragons version 3.5 that was a, an open version of D&D before uh, Wizards of the Coast went all weird and started making their closed source stuff. And so uh, Paizo Publishing took that work uh, long ago and created Pathfinder as the open source version of D&D 3.5, and then recently made, or about a few years ago, made uh, uh, Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition, and that is what the kids and I are starting on tonight. Uh, we've got all the books, all kinds of stuff, we've got some adventure guides, and we are starting to play some of them uh, to try to learn the game mechanics so we can get into a campaign. Right now it's not a campaign, we're doing a one shot over the course of a couple nights, but it's fun to do and uh, we've been looking forward to getting into that for a long time. I've, I've been very uh, negligent about getting something going, but I'm, I'm working really hard to make sure that that happens. So I left everyone. They went uh, out to Geckos to hang out for the night. I walked uh, through Sutiava, caught a taxi, headed back to the house, and gamed with the girls tonight. So that was my evening. It was very nice, um, and I can't, uh, can't wait to do the rest of the campaign with them. This is, it's a one-shot deal. We're doing it over, we think, two nights but we figured out a lot of stuff. We're getting a lot of game mechanics figured out, so we'll be able to do these things in the future. So that's really fantastic. What a beautiful afternoon this is that I'm filming. I'm filming all this on Saturday. I'm doing several days all at once because I am so dramatically far behind on the show, but it's cool. I'm catching up. It's not a big deal. We're getting there. We've had a lot of camera problems, which have made this very difficult because uh, I lose often half a day just because of camera problems. Uh, so I'm working, I'm starting to do some videos in the office at night with artificial light just to be able to pump them out because uh, every time I do one at night, that's a whole day of the week that I don't have to figure out how to be outside to do. Today I want to talk about, because Valentina and I were discussing this week, s some of the reasons that American cultural differences are so dramatic with that of Latin America. And on the surface, it's very easy to say that Americans have it. Sorry, I'm getting bit on my legs. It's like, it's like the evening hour. There's like mosquitoes or something. Uh, it's very easy to say that um, Americans uh, uh, tend to stay home and uh, Latinos tend to go out. Right. Um, okay, on the surface, that's, that's very true and that's important. And I know that as someone who grew up in America and lived there, this is how we lived. And, and here in Latin America, this is how we live. But I think there's some really important explanation behind this that could go a long way. And I think for you guys, this is valuable because um, it, it really does help you understand why our cultures have become the way that they are. And there's some artifacts here that I don't have answers to. Why are Americans like this? Why are Latinos like this? I don't know per se. I mean, some of it is just thousands of years of, of social development separate from each other. Some of it is which parts of Europe and, and language families and things, those things play, play roles. But overall, who knows what the absolute underpinnings are, but there's some really important things that we know today. A big thing here in Latin America, one is people love live music. They love going out. They love being 
social. If you give people the opportunity to watch TV or to sit out on the sidewalk, they're going to almost always sit out on the sidewalk. It is just what people prefer to do. They want to talk to real people rather than have stories told to them. In the United States, we have a tendency to elevate television, movies, and other media to a very high level, whereas in Latin America, they tend to elevate simply having conversations with other people to a very high level. Neither is right or wrong. It is just simply two different approaches. That's a fundamental starting point, but there's far more to it. In Latin America, most of Latin America, and especially places like Mexico, Nicaragua, uh, uh, Colombia, right, you have a low unemployment uh, or a low employment rate. There's a surplus of people without jobs, and this creates some challenges in society. You have people without a lot of extra income to go out and do a lot of things, and that may seem like you would then stay home a lot because of that, but it doesn't work that way because it means there's a lot of low income jobs in the service industries and a lot of those things become very cheap to go do and things that you would stay home and do often become very expensive. Televisions are expensive, stereos are expensive, uh, and homes tend to be very small. You don't invest in a home that you're not gonna spend a lot of time in. I can see the bugs flying around my face. I'm pretty sure it is mosquitoes. I've picked a bad location for this. Uh, and we're gonna move down the hill. In America, we tend to have enough money that getting televisions and having big houses and air conditioning and the ability to stay home and play video games and all that is very easy. But because there's a, a high employment rate and the income level of workers is very high, it makes things like going out to bars or restaurants very expensive. And there tends to be cover charges because it's very expensive to operate those things. And there's a lot of insurance costs and, uh, and just all kinds of expenses of doing business in the United States that don't don't exist in most of Latin America. Because of this, going out in Latin America is not only dramatically cheaper than it is in the United States, but it may actually be a lower percentage of your income than it is in the United States, which is very surprising. But it is easy to go out in much of Latin America, buy one beer for just about a dollar, and spend the entire evening on that, and people think nothing of it. You can go into dance clubs, really busy, packed dance clubs, and pay no cover and never be expected to go to the bar. That's very different. In the United States, you'd probably pay somewhere between five and twenty dollars as a cover. You'd need to buy multiple drinks or they would ask you to leave, and those drinks could be 5 to $20. That adds up really fast compared to $1. Even if you're earning 25 times as much, which of course they do in the United States compared to Nicaragua, but it's the, with the purchasing power and the cost of living, the difference is actually not that big. It's still big, but it's not nearly as big as you would think. So the cost of going out in the United States may actually be much higher. Food in the United States, going out to someplace like Denny's might be $75 for a family of four. If you were to do the same thing in Nicaragua, you might be able to go out for $10 that's closer to being equal. Uh, so just, it, it tends to be that it's easier to go out in Latin America because we're not investing in our homes in that way and we do want to be out and be social and the cost of going out and being social is generally very, very low. And if you don't want to go to a bar, not everyone does. Maybe you don't want to dance, maybe you don't want to drink, maybe you don't want to see live music. We have big public parks and places that people actually go and hang out. The same we found in Spain and Italy and other parts of the Mediterranean world. It's common to have a big city park with trampolines and, and bouncy houses and activities for kids and lots of kids getting together and playing in a neighborhood and hanging out and, and adults just chilling together and, and finding social places to visit. This is how people live and because of that, those things are essentially free or incredibly cheap. Just go get a soda, go get a beer, hang out on the park. In the United States, you're not allowed to drink in public normally. You're not encouraged to hang out in public. It's considered weird to be out in public. It's not safe to be out in public. All kinds of things. So one of the big differences is that the entertainment in the United States has a tendency, tendency to be to work. Because you have all these things cost so much money. And because, sure, you can stay home and watch TV, but that gets boring pretty quickly for most people. It encourages people to work longer hours. And if everyone's working longer hours, it encourages more people to work longer hours. And it becomes a culture of working lots and lots of hours. And we start to see doing work as a form of entertainment. So even if we're not going to work, right, we may come home and then say, well, I need to have a hobby to keep me busy. And I certainly feel this way. Uh, so I need to be writing a book. I need to be making my vlog. I need to be uh, uh, playing a video game, which is not the same as work, but it sometimes it feels like I'm doing a thing that has to be accomplished. I need to feel accomplished all the time. I must be completing another thing. And 
in Latin America, they don't have that because there's an opportunity so much of the time, I say because, I assume because, there's so much of an opportunity to, when you're done with work, you're done with work, and now you can go socialize. And, and by socializing, you're not using all of this money that you need to work more to, to be able to do. And so it becomes a much more you work to live rather than you live to work. And when you live to work like you do in the United States, there's a very high chance that you're just going to keep working. And so I find being an American, I'm often in a situation where I'm like, ah, well, I'm just going to work until one o'clock in the morning. I will start work at seven o'clock in the morning and I'm still working at one o'clock in the morning. I live in Nicaragua. Everyone around me is like, okay, it's 4.30, I'm done. Out they go, right? Gonna hang out in the park, have a beer. They're not spending a lot of money, but they are having social time with friends and family or whatever. And and yes, I'm at home, I go see my kids, I have dinner, but I'm still, what do I do? I'm not gonna turn on the TV, I don't play a video game, I don't do anything that people would generally qualify as entertainment. I stay at my desk and I get more work done because I can right because it's there because that's a form of entertainment being an american i was taught this is kind of how you entertain yourself by getting more work done and the more you get accomplished the more you win right but win what no one knows uh but that's the feeling we have it's a little bit hard to explain but but Valentina very much agreed with me as we were discussing it that this is a very strong artifact between Latin American countries. They really want to get done with work and feel no obligation to keep working uh, as they shouldn't when their time is done, when they're no longer being paid, when it's no longer their obligation. They just head out and, and socialize and Americans have a tendency to work until they need to watch a little bit of TV and go to bed and start again. And it's very, very different and you feel it every day. Um, and when you hang out with a lot of people between the two cultures, it's really quick how much you notice the on one side just constant why aren't we going out why aren't we going somewhere where are we going now and on the other side what do you mean where are we going you why would we go out we went out last week right the expectation that every night is a night out that come the sun start to set you head out it's just what you do like the sun is setting that's beautiful we should have a beer and look at it every day well of course that makes total sense but americans are so much like what do you mean it's not midnight why would i stop working um, that, that difference is so big. And I know not every American is like that. I know a lot of Americans, but they, they fill their, their evenings with cooking dinner and, and um, you know, school events and work events and, and put, making things so busy that they're busy until they go to bed. They're never just sitting around having a beer, hanging out with friends. The idea that you would do that every day, that every day can be a social experience, experience with your friends and family, that you never need to have weekends be something you look forward to, every evening is something you look forward to, to being with people you care about, is an amazing difference between societies and uh, something that when you're coming to Latin America from North America, I think, um, it is a shock that takes a long time to understand that the expectation is you will go out and do something interesting, just live music, just dancing, just beers, just nice food, but do it maybe not every day, but five or six days of the week. That staying in, yeah, you're really tired, maybe you'll go to bed early, maybe there's a show you really wanna see and you'll watch that once in a while. That's the exception, not the rule, but in the United States, it's totally the opposite. Growing up, everybody I knew, every night of the week they had these are the shows i watched on on these nights now of course we didn't have netflix and on-demand stuff back then so it was much more dramatic but you would be looking forward to many nights of the week this is what you're going to do and come friday night when you should be going out if nothing else on friday night of all days in the, in america that's when the best shows were on tv and you'd be like well what's better than staying in on a friday night but to Latin Americans, they'd be like, what are you, are you out of your mind? Why would you stay in on a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday night? Sure, maybe a Monday or Tuesday I could see, but those nights stay, are you crazy? That's the best live music. That's the best dancing. That's the best drinking. That's the best seeing people. Why, you, you would give that up? Like sure, once a year you might give that up, but every Friday, 50 out of 52 Fridays, they can't believe it. Right, such a cultural difference. Um, and, and I don't know that I'll ever uh, not have the, ooh, we get to just stay in, have a pizza and watch TV. That sounds great feeling, because um, it's so ingrained, but also the, we can just go out any night we want. That's amazing. Wow, something in my ear. Really interesting to see the cultures colliding and try to figure out why it is that way. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Got any comments, questions? Get down there below if you want to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. Help me afford some off that I need to spray myself to keep these bugs off and to replace the cameras that are dying at an incredible pace. And uh, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. I will see 
all of you tomorrow.